You know, I think every director choreographer, we sort of have the same journey. We were all kids in the chorus at one point. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 greatest Broadway choreographers of all time. Be brave, step outside your comfort zone. And this experience has really taught me that. For this list, we'll be looking at the most influential composers of movement from the theater world. Which Broadway show do you think has the best choreography? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Tommy Toon. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Harlem sits? Putting on the Ritz. This 10-time Tony award-winning Broadway icon is best known for two things. Being an exceptionally tall tap dancer, measuring at almost 6 foot 7, and his career both on stage and behind the scenes. This performer, choreographer, and director's range knows no bounds and he leaves an indelible mark on every musical with which he's involved. We know that Broadway has a universal mystique, and I am proud and humbled to be a part of our Broadway universe. It's vast and inclusive. You wouldn't necessarily think that shows like The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Grand Hotel, A Day in Hollywood, A Night in the Ukraine, and the Will Rogers Follies share a choreographer. but he picks the perfect movements to drive the narratives, almost like a sommelier picking out the finest wine. That's the Tommy Toon magic touch. <laughs> Number nine, George Faison. Dance is a ritual of living when we come together to dance, we will create more and more understanding with each other, making a better world, a better New York, a better dance. An alumnus of the Alvin Ailey Dance Company, this choreographer is notable for his modern and balletic styles. Alvin entertained my dreams that a black boy could actually dance. In 1970, Faison appeared in the musical Pearly and later founded the George Faison Universal Dance Experience, where he developed his craft. He has dozens of Broadway credits, from Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But you are probably most familiar with his work in The Wiz, which premiered on Broadway in 1975. He choreographed the fun, fast-stepping ease on down the road and several of the show's ballet routines. It was magic. We gave you magic, we gave you glitter until we got choked on it. This earned him a Tony Award for Best Choreography, making him the first African American to win the prize. What? <laughs> what did you say? Thank you so very much. Number eight, Jerry Mitchell. It's not a very complicated number. People, it really does, uh, people, people love it because it's about what they're doing, not not the treadmills, it's about what they're doing on them and how they're celebrating the making of the boot, which is always when it's connected to story, I think is when it works best. Let us hear you say yeah for this masterful choreographer. Everybody say yeah, yeah. Mitchell started his career on the stage and had the privilege of working under the likes of Agnes DeMille, Michael Bennett, and Jerome Robbins. He's incredibly versatile, often letting the show's storytelling shape his movements. Indeed, he's helped reimagine some of our favorite movie scenes as pop and dance numbers. Bend and snap, anyone? Mitchell also earned Tony Awards for his work in La Cage aux Folles and Kinky Boots. No style is out of his range, from the old-school Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and dynamic on your feet to the high-spirited hairspray. Reach up, down, step, hit, step, hit. You take off your coat and leave the squares behind. Throw it over your head and woo. Woo! Is there any wonder he's one of today's most sought-after choreographers? Number 7, Jillian Lynn. And I said to them all at the beginning of the auditions, don't even stay in this room if you don't A, feel passionate about dance, 
B, you don't feel really proud to be going to work in a wonderful, wonderful theatre. And C, that you're not willing to come on a journey with me and do mad things and be different. The late Dame Gillian Lynn began her career as a ballerina before jetaying into the role of choreographer. While her roots are primarily in ballet and opera, she also contributed to musical theater in shows like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, The Phantom of the Opera, and, of course, Cats. I started it with all those tiny, brittle movements that they do speaking to each other so that the audience is looking at like a cut diamond and not sure which is human. The latter is exceptionally dance-heavy and features some of musical theater's most iconic dances. The Jellicle Ball, for instance. It was quite the challenge, given that she also had to convince audiences to believe in these dancing cats. Perhaps in someone else's hands, this would have been a catastrophe. We were then not sure of the strength of the Grisabella story. We were not sure whether the sensuality and the sexuality that I had tried to build into the show, because that's how cats are, would work. But her striking choreography dazzled audiences and helped suspend their disbelief. Needless to say, her creativity and vision were perfect. Number 6. Michael Kidd What do shows and films like Finian's Rainbow, Guys and Dolls, Can Can, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and The Bandwagon have in common? They all feature the vigorously imaginative and artistic style of five-time Tony Award winner Michael Kidd. Kidd described his choreography as, quote, human behavior and people's manners stylized into musical rhythmic forms. My first job was to see if I could capture the general atmosphere in the opening scene of Guys and Dolls. You can recognize his movements for their more conversational manner and how he used what he called real-life gestures to inspire his work. Go down to the prop shop. Find anything you can that will be lying around when they build a barn. Bring planks of lumber, lumber bring saw horses, bring an axe. You can see this in everything he's done, from charming jazz ballets to adrenaline-inducing acrobatic showstoppers. In 1981, he took his rightful place in the American Theater Hall of Fame. Number 5. Michael Bennett The metaphor is a chorus line. It's being part of a great team. And being part of the human race is very nice. I don't think it'd be fun to be the only human being around, you know? Seven-time Tony winner Michael Bennett's first choreographic role was in the 1966 musical A Joyful Noise. However, his first big hit was with the 1968 show Promises, Promises, featuring the iconic Turkey Lurkey Time number. <laughs> He became a big name on Broadway throughout the 70s and 80s with Company, Follies, Dreamgirls, and A Chorus Line. Uh, dancers just talk about Broadway and their lives. I began to hear musical numbers. Bennett and longtime collaborator Bob Avian are why many theater kids can't hear 5, 6, 7, 8 without bursting into this famous number. <laughs> Bennett wasn't necessarily defined by a particular style. Still, many of his routines feature sharp, controlled movements requiring high stamina and athleticism. Sadly, he was taken before his time, but his choreography defined an era of musical theater. He wanted to take that empty space called a stage and do three things. To tell the truth, make the audience happy, and to keep his dancers working for a long, long time. Number four, Agnes DeMille. And by putting this impulse, this driving impact, behind every gesture, the roping, and the pulling, and the stretching, watch these gestures without the impact. DeMille didn't just break into the typically male-heavy field, but she practically reinvented the genre. One of her first Broadway hits was the 1943 musical Oklahoma. Until then, dance numbers provided interludes to the show's plot. However, thanks to her approach, Oklahoma was among the first shows where the choreography tied into the dialogue. 
cementing its place as a landmark musical. The style may be stretched, elaborated, made more broad for effect, but the meaning of the dance must not be altered. The Farmer and the Cowman is a fun example, but the show's dream ballet is often considered to be groundbreaking for how it invited audiences into the character's psyche. <sighs> DeMille went on to choreograph Carousel, Brigadoon, Paint Your Wagon, and more, leaving her legendary mark everywhere. Like a sharp breath, and then they just dissolve into luminous air. Many choreographers still cite her as an inspiration. Number three, Susan Stroman. So the choreography is even uh, taps into the architecture of New York. And you know, you see the Koreans with, you know, where they would have holding balls in their hand, you know, these art deco figurines. Mm -hmm. Stroman is another choreographer who started her career on the stage. However, she switched lanes in the late 80s when she got her big break choreographing Kander and Ebb's Flora the Red Menace. This began a long collaboration with the duo that included shows like And the World Goes Round, Steel Pier, and the Scottsboro Boys. In 1992, she earned her first Tony Award choreographing the Gershwin musical Crazy For You. She later won another for the 1994 Showboat Revival. And in 2001, she won the Best Direction and Best Choreography Awards for the record-breaking musical The Producers. It's hardly surprising that Stroman is one of her generation's most in-demand and celebrated director choreographers. Number two, Jerome Robbins. To a choreographer, an empty stage or an empty rehearsal floor where you begin is a rather awesome place because it's where you begin, where you put your first mark down, where you take your first step. And it's sort of like a painter deciding where to put the first line down on a canvas. Fewer choreographers have shaped the American dance scene quite like Jerome Robbins. An alumnus of what's now known as American Ballet Theater, Robbins's dance background and natural talents created some of the most prolific choreography ever. His mark can be seen in shows like On the Town, Gypsy, Fiddler on the Roof, and more. However, his greatest legacy is probably West Side Story. The dance numbers are tightly intertwined with the narrative, practically replacing the need for dialogue. He used classical ballet overlaid with modern jazz and a conversational tone to powerfully relay the character's emotions. Just look at the prologue. It effortlessly sets up the story without the need for words. No one did it quite like Robbins. Jerome Robbins' Broadway is both a musical legacy and a theatrical leap forward by an artist whose greatest gift is to recognize our simplest dreams and then make them fly. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Sabian Glover. This tap dancing extraordinaire won a Tony Award for his work on Bring in De Noise, Bring in De Funk. Bill T. Jones. His innovative approach to movement earned him Tony Awards for Spring Awakening and Fella. Ben, what else do you have? Your ideas. And if you can't dance your ideas in the studio with my dancers and in front of the media, and I'm often in front of the media, how do you make your case? Mm. Language. Jack Cole. The father of theatrical jazz dance's credits include Kismet, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, and Man of La Mancha. Andy Blankenbuehler. In the Heights, 9 to 5, Bring It On the Musical, and Hamilton. Need we say more? We had this very vicious, violent position where now he's not afraid of facing death. So we have six, seven, I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory. This is where it gets me, on my feet, enemy, head of me, right there. Casey Nicola. 
A modern musical choreography icon, credits include The Book of Mormon, Aladdin, Something Rotten, The Prom, and many more. You want to give it a different take and you want it to be theatrical in a way that people haven't seen it on film, you know, and, and, and keep the things that they remember and love and that are iconic and then add to it for the theater. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Bob Fosse And I've always been slightly round-shouldered, and so I started to exaggerate that, and I don't have what the ballet dancers call a turnout. So I started turning my feet in, and I guess that's the style they talk about. Even the most casual musical theater fan can instantly recognize Fosse's trademark style. Those sharp isolations, punctuated hand gestures, turned-in knees, angular shaping, seductive hip rolls, and of course, everyone's favorite, jazz hands. Fosse's movements were as much about stillness and subtleness as they were about giving audiences that old razzle-dazzle. And I found out in choreography frequently that less movement, more economical movement, or no movement at all, makes a stronger statement than a, a fierce uh, activity. And he was no stranger to chucking in a bowler hat, either. Although typically rooted in jazz, his choreography featured elements of ballet, music hall, folk dance, and more. The Pajama Game, Sweet Charity, Pippin, and Chicago barely scratched the surface of his most notable credits. We want practically reinvented modern Broadway dance and earned numerous awards for it. Today, he remains a household name and an inspiration to many. When the music carries them away, Eric! Who's got the pain when they do the mumbo? Who's got the pain when they go, Eric! Who's got the pain when they do the mumbo? I don't know who, do you? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.